Is your Magic the Gathering collection too big for a fat pack box? Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, how should I store and organize my collection? This is a question whose answers will vary depending upon what kind of collection you have. For the purposes of this video, I'll be talking about organizing and storing larger, long-term collections. Please remember, this video is meant to be taken as a guideline, not the absolute rule. The precise nature of how you organize and store your cards will be personal to you and your needs. That being said, let's start with rares. Rares are typically kept in binders. If you haven't seen my video on the best binder pages, you should check it out here. In it, I look at the many, many different binder pages available, as well as the portfolios offered by Ultra Pro and Monster. For storing your rares, it's best to use binder pages in a three-ring binder instead of a portfolio, because binder pages are modular, meaning you can sort and move them from one place to another easily. And if they ever tear or break, you simply need to buy one additional page to replace it, which is a minimal cost. Rares should be sorted by color and set. This means that you'll use one binder page per color per set. If you fill up one sheet with rares from a set, then you simply need an additional sheet as your collection grows. I like to use a total of two binders, one for what is currently in standard, and one to store my library of cards that are no longer in standard. I find it very helpful to be able to grab one binder that just consists of the current standard sets, and another when looking for rares for Modern, Commander, Highlander, or Legacy. When a block rotates out of standard, it is easy to just move the pages from one binder to the other. This is also why keeping them sorted by both color and set is effective. You can add them to your larger library of rares without having to pull the individual cards in and out of the binder sheets. Remember, the number of binders you have and how cards are sorted between them is up to you. You can make another folder for your most valuable rares and mythics, or one for the singles that you use most commonly in commander decks. The key is being able to get your cards sorted and stored away, and then find them quickly and effectively when you need them. What about commons and uncommons? The most popular storage for your bulk of commons and uncommons is in the card storage boxes offered by BCW. BCW makes a wide variety of sizes, but the single row 800 count is one of the most common. These are relatively inexpensive, usually only costing a dollar or two. Just as with rares, the most effective way to store your commons and uncommons is by color and set. I find one of the 800 count boxes is typically enough for each individual set, although sometimes I need to divide a set between two boxes. Writing the set name and marker is fine, or you can get fancy and print out set symbols to label your boxes. Within the boxes, cards should be sorted by color and rarity. Here you can see that a divider has been placed between the commons and uncommons. When I need a playset of a common or uncommon for a deck, I know just where to look. Index cards can be used as dividers. For the 800 count box, a 3x5 index card, cut in half, makes two perfectly sized dividers. I've also known some players to save and then use the add cards from booster packs. If you don't feel comfortable cutting up add cards, you can always cut up something less valuable like clue stones instead. What about alphabetizing the cards? I used to alphabetize, and it certainly made it easier to know which cards I had and how many of them were in my collection, but it also became a major time sink. I've found that it doesn't take long to flip through an individual pile, say, blue commons or blue uncommons, to pull the cards you need from it. Currently, I only alphabetize if I have some time to kill, and only cards from sets that have rotated out of standard, but that's just personal preference. A popular addition to most people's collection is something like this small, affordable, four-compartment storage unit from IKEA. This holds an ample amount of boxes and doubles as shelves for your binders. You can even add a drawer to hold sealed products, sleeves, deck boxes, things like that. Now, your entire Magic collection is not only sorted, but consolidated into a very small amount of space.
For a while, I liked getting the four row boxes from BCW and keeping my standard cards within them. It was easy to flip through the commons and uncommons that I was using most often in standard constructed. Once a set rotated out of standard, I'd move it to its own 800 count box. Keep in mind that these methods are most applicable to players who keep large collections such as myself. If you primarily only play draft and keep a standard deck from time to time, you'll have a much smaller amount of cards to store and sort. But that's another video. I hope this video has been of help to you. Remember to subscribe so you not only won't miss a new video, but can help me keep making new videos as well. Got a suggestion or an idea for a future video? Post about it in the comments, or let me know on Facebook or Twitter. I try very hard to make videos from the suggestions that I get.